Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, tonight's video, what I have, I'm changing across from my Nikon camera to a Canon. This is, I've had it for about a year now. It's a one that's been astro modded, and I took it into work, and one of the fellows in work took out the IR cut filter from it. Uh, and honestly, I thought I was going to use it more than I have, but I guess we're getting some clear sky this week with quite a bright moon, so I thought to myself maybe I should try and mess about with uh, HA, since you can shoot it in basically a full moon. It's also it cuts out a lot of uh, light pollution. So I started looking at uh, what is the, the ideal range to be shooting at for exposures. So we'll run through some of how I work this out. and This is gleaned from other people and various sources on the internet. Um, I have a, a lengthy document. It's five pages that explains it all sort of in depth, gives a bit of an introduction. But I'll just hit the uh, key points at the minute. So essentially there's a concept called unity gain where you're not putting a lot of gain into your images. Essentially, gain is just a way of boosting everything, boosting noise and signal, just to bring it up so that you can see everything. Um, this is the explanation. So 12-bit, there's the value, 14-bit. So this is the one that I'll be using because my cameras are 14-bit. Um, some of the CCDs, more recent ones anyway, would be 16-bit. Um, you can get information for your camera in a number of different ways. Sensor Gen is one site that will offer you information. So this is, um, to be fair, you can't take this all as gospel, but it does give you a, a good a good overview of what you're looking at. So the, this is your saturation that I was talking about in this column. So I can see that for me, the closest one to the 16.383 is this, which is ISO 400, which is fine, I'm happy enough with that. Admittedly, the noise is a wee bit higher than down at, say, ISO 1600, but I, do, I personally don't like going up to high ISOs, I like to stay down low. So, I think this is where I'll be going to, so, let's see what, so, let's see. Then we'll look across here at read noise, so that's what we've just discussed. And the theory of how you can actually calculate gain, because this doesn't give you gain, and that's saturation over uh, the bit maximum, so sat the, that would be the 16.3 at 3. So the other way, and I'm going to show that, is to use shots that you take, and you can capture them in whatever software you want to do. And PixInsight has a script that will actually extract the gain and the read noise from that and allow you to empirically measure those. The basis for this is that you may have noticed in some programs like Sequence Generator Pro that whenever you take an image you, there is actually a readout in the top corner that is ADU and it gives you a number. So that's that would be an average for the uh, entire image. So an ADU is essentially analog to digital unit. So that's how many photons of light hit your sensor to give a a one uh, give you, to give you a value on a, on a pixel if you like so the idea behind this is that you want this least you want is for that average ADU to be 20 times read noise over gain and that read noise over gain is essentially what people hear people talking about the noise floor so that's where the noise would stop and then you've got this gap to where you want your data to be So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up SG Pro and create a sequence. And I've obviously already ran this sequence, so there's no point in sitting on the video while it captures exposures. So what you need, and you can see this in PixInsight, it will give you instructions on how to do this. So we open up a new target and make sure neither of these is clicked because we don't want it to try and connect to the uh, telescope mount. It's just the same as you would do when you're running flats. So the bias, I'm going to be looking at ISO 400. So for bias, we set the exposure to zero. And that just basically takes it as quickly as it can. Um, we would want flats. And I know that this one is, for me, on this camera, 0 0.01. And you want two flats, two bias. And then the next you want is two darks. The recommended exposure is one minute and 10 minutes. 
and that is pretty much you good to go. Um, I will pause the video now and jump across onto my other machine and just check that everything's up. Okay, so whenever we come in, pull our images into so that's my four images, my two flats, two bias, and two darks of different exposure length. So this was me this morning, and I pulled these in. And whenever I actually, as I was cap capturing them in SG Pro, I noticed that the ADU was coming in at 4,000, and that confused me no end because I couldn't understand what was going on. Because with my Nikon, I'm used to seeing it um, down 15 or 20. So it turns out that I'll just bring this up and let you see what I'm talking about. You can see here that the spike is not in at the left. So in the Nikon, normally you can't even see that spike in a bias image. It's just it's so close into the side. So what I have found today through Googling for hours on end is that uh, Canon, Canon applies an offset. And apparently this is not uncommon. Well, even with CCDs, it's just the CCDs you actually can control that offset. And, and the, the rationale behind this, from what I've gathered, is to make sure that whenever you read the data off the sensor you're never given a negative value i know no more than that so that's just if anybody else sees this um, as you go i did notice that as you went up to the longer darks it did move up slightly and that increase was actually in line with what i would expect to see so as your exposure lengthens you will get some more thermal thermal noise in your image and that will cause your average ADU to go up because obviously you're getting more information there granted it's not anything you want so the next step then is to go up into scripts and it is instrumentation basic CCD parameters so we'll just bring this across here and you just go down and you select flat and the other flat the bias and then obviously the other bias and then the select or two darks I don't think it matters what order I do the shorter one first and then what you do is for D1 which is the first one we selected we have to put in the exposure length and then we do the same for D2 so the next set step is the camera property so CFA so with DSLRs you would tick this for CCDs you wouldn't the readout depth is basically the depth that your capture program saves the file out at with SG Pro it is 16 yes 16 and this is also 16 so this actually specifically mentions the EOS 40D which is the camera I'll be using the maximum ADU is what the what the camera saturates at so I will actually drop back because I did have this on screen after I write it down so it's 1 2 3 4 8 so if I just put this in, and that is it pretty much done. So what you do is I just stretch this out a bit so you can see everything. Even though I don't want the bottom ones, and click report, it will go off and analyze and come back. I'm not sure what that's all about. The warning coming up, but not to worry. So what this is telling me, so there is the gain that I mentioned previously and the readout noise. So if you remember, it was readout noise over gain gives you your ADU, gives you an ADU value. So this has actually done it for me here. So it's 33.9 is what I have. So looking back, going back to my uh, theory then, just drop into this Word document. So it was ADU equals that. Sorry, if I skip on down. So times 20, yes. So that has given me the 30, 34, let's say, times 20. So that is times 10 is 340, 780. So that's around 780. But one of the things that I do need to do is I need to add that to my... I should have went to the other machine. I need to add that to my offset. So whenever I capture these things, I can tell. So that whenever I'm capturing images... I can look at the ADU value as the images come in and I can decide I need a longer exposure, I need a shorter exposure. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if I take, I'll just take a bias and drop it in. So you can see there that this is up in the le top left, 4096. So my offset is about 4100. 
So I would add my 780 to that, and that would get me sort of, I would say, 4,900. That's where I would be aiming at, at a minimum to be there, or perhaps maybe add an extra 1,000 to that. I would try to be somewhere between 4,900 and, say, 6,000. I wouldn't want to go any higher than that, otherwise you'll end up um, overexposing certain areas. So what we can see here is if I take the 60 second exposure and drop this on, you can see that value goes up. Not massively, but it does go up. If we take the 600 second and put it in, it goes up again. So that was that uh, linear change that I was mentioning earlier. I've seen that same sort of same sort of numbers, except without the 4,000 offset. So that has pretty much given me what I need to do. So the next time I'm imaging them and I take I'm imaging a target and I think my first image comes in. I'm going to look and I'm going to see is it greater than 4,900? If it's if it's not, then I know that I'm underexposed. If it's coming in way high, say 8,000, then I'll know I'm overexposed. And to me, that's a good thing, so I can back off my exposure length. And that's about everything, I think. So if there's any questions, just send me a message. Thanks for listening.